Hello and welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm your host, Aaron Nunley. Uh, glad to have you back with us. Thank you for watching. Um, we are working our way through how we solve equations algebraically. We've been taking it very, very gradually. We've been doing it on purpose to make sure that we don't miss any of the details. Um, one of the things that I, I believe is very, very true about how we teach mathematics here in the United States is that um, we have a tendency to gloss over some things that at first seem minor but have major implications for us uh, in terms of um, the larger scope of mathematics and that if we can turn our attention to those those seemingly minor things early on we can apply them in ways that are going to make the rest of mathematics much more understandable so we're being very very cautious about uh, process and reasoning uh, and showing our work as we go through uh, through this process we are in uh, lesson four i believe lesson four um, we're talking about solving multi-step algebra one equations or formally solving linear equations uh, in a single variable the last time we spoke uh, we talked about solving multi-step equations that involve the distributive property we said that really appears one of two ways in a problem and sometimes both in the same problem as we'll see further down the line over here in this example on the left you can see we're given a problem where we have five groups and every group has an x and a 32 in it um, and this is an example from our previous video i've just cut and pasted it here so we can mention it very quickly and we said that if you have five groups that means you have five of everything in the group that means you have five of the x and you have five of the 32 that's known as the distributive property. Well, 5x's is 5x's, 532's is 160, and it still equals 48. That's just some simple computation. Now, we've talked often about this simple two-step equation form and how once we reach this form of the equation, these generally solve the exact same way. We use the property of equality to get rid of the 160. We then, um, notice we, by the way, we use the uh, additive inverse uh, to get rid of plus 160, we do minus 160 or negative 160, and we have to do it on both sides. That's the property of equality. We then do a little computation, use the identity property to get rid of the zero. We look at this times 5 and realize that if we want to get rid of that, we need to use the multiplicative inverse, which is times 1 fifth. A lot of people do divided by 5, which is the same thing. Uh, giving us 1x, we had to do it on the right as well, giving us negative 22 and 2 fifths, property of equality, computation, and identity. The other way this tends to appear is something like this, 5x plus 2x plus 11 equals 95. Notice that this 5x and 2x can be combined. Most teachers just talk about those as combining like terms, but really the, um, the formal way to describe that is the distributive property. I have x groups of 5 and I have x groups of 2, therefore I have 7, or x groups of 7 or 7 groups of x. Um, this is much less familiar, but it, 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 it is used um, very, very frequently. We just want to be aware that it is the distributive property. Notice once again the two-step equation pattern. We have equality, computation, identity, equality, computation, and identity. Today I'm going to introduce two more uh, properties to you. We, uh, we hope that those are familiar to you, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them, but I am going to take them back to a very rudimentary elementary level um, to make sure that we, we grasp their full meaning, and then we'll talk about how they allow us to solve even more complex algebraic problems. Notice, by the way, the formal definition of the distributive property here on the left. A groups of B and C is A, B's, and this should be A, C's. There's another typo. I'll have to go back and fix that. Let me see if I can do this real quick. That is an A. There we go. And over here, A uh, groups of B and A groups of C is the same as A groups, both having A, B, and A, C in them. There again, I will fix those typos in my hard copy. Sorry about that. Let's get back to our arrow. All right, let's see if we can do this. Now, the commutative property in formal language says, if I have an A and I have a B, that's the same as having a B and an A. Or, if I have an A times a B, that's the same as a B times an A. In much simpler language, we say that in addition and multiplication, it doesn't matter which one comes first, the solution is the same. So. I've created a simple example for us of this problem so we can talk about it, um, maybe, maybe in a pictorial representation. If I have a 2 plus a 3, I'm going to get the same solution as if I have a 3 plus a 2. Or, 
maybe to create an illustration, if I have two bears and three bears, two bears and three bears, that's exactly the same as having five bears. Well, if I have three bears and two bears, that's three and two, notice that's exactly the same as five bears. Addition is just putting things together or combining things. So when you're just taking two things and combining them, it really doesn't make a huge difference which one you write first. You're going to end up with the same solution either way. In multiplication, we would look at it this way. If I have two sets of three bears, because that's what multiplication is, it's two of these. There's three bears, and there's three bears. I end up with a group of six bears. If I have three sets of two bears, there's a set of two, a set of two, and a set of two. All together, that makes six bears. It really doesn't matter which uh, number I put first. Three groups of two and two groups of three are the exact same thing. The associative property is often confused with the commutative property. It says that if I have a string of addition, a plus b plus c, that's the same as if I have a plus b plus c. Notice the parentheses here. I've changed the order of operations. I've not changed the order of the numbers. a is first, b is second, and c is third. In the commutative property, I changed which one was written first. In the associative property, I'm saying order of operations says I'm supposed to work from left to right. So add the a and the b first, then add the c. But the associative property says, since it's all just one long string of addition, I can use parentheses to change my order of operations and combine B and C first and then add A second. It won't make a difference. Or we do the same thing with multiplication. Order of operations says multiply A and B first, then take that answer times C. The associative property says it really doesn't matter. You can do B and C first and multiply by A as well. In a string of multiplication or addition, it doesn't matter which thing you add or multiply first, the solution is the same. I got an extra word in there, sorry about that as well. So going back to our bear illustration, if I have two plus one plus three bears, that's two bears and one bear and three more bears, and I want to add or combine all of those together. Well, let's see. I have two bears combined with one bear for a total of three bears. And then I put the other three bears in, I end up with a total of six bears. Over here on the right, notice the order of operations says we want to combine the one and the three first. Well, okay, there's the one combined with the three. That's a total of four in the box. I add the two bears last, I still end up with six bears. Notice it didn't matter. This is all just one long line of combining things, all one long line of combining things. When you're combining, it doesn't matter which thing you put into the box first. Either way, the result is the same. So let's talk about how this looks. By the way, I did not do an illustration um, of the associated property of multiplication, but hopefully on your own you can figure that out. I have an original problem here. It says 3x plus 7 plus 4x plus 8 equals negative 48. Notice that 3x and 4x are like terms. The plus 7 and the plus 8 are also like terms. But order of operations says I'm supposed to add these first. That's a problem because I can't actually add a 7 to 3 x's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this. Notice that I've changed the order of the addition so that the 3x and the 4x are next to each other and the 7 and the 8 are next to each other. I can do that because the commutative property says if it's just one long string of addition, it doesn't really matter. Now, some people get caught up in the fact that um, there's some multiplication in here in the 3 times x and the 4 times x, but please keep in mind that if we were actually doing this addition, we would have to add or multiply these together to begin with. So by the time the addition takes place, this should be a single number as should this. The problem is we don't know what that number is, which is why we have to treat it as a single group.
or monomial. Anyway, the computer, commutative property allowed me to rearrange those. Now, if I want to uh, complete this, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go through and say, oh, well, let's group the x's together and let's group the numbers together. Notice, order of operations says I should add these, find that answer, then add the 7. Well, I would be stuck at that point because I can't add 7 to this number because I don't know what this number is until I know the value of x. But the associative property says, you know what? It's all one long string of addition anyway, so let's group the like things together because it doesn't matter what order we combine things. Well, that's really the toughest part of this problem because the distributive property we learned in the last slideshow allows us to combine those x's. Simple computation allows us to combine the 7 and the 8 for a total of 15. Well, from there, that's a, that's a two-step equation. We can go back to our common pattern. Property quality, computation, identity, property equality, computation, identity. Now, there are other methods that lots of math teachers will teach in order to solve this. Um, there are a lot of shortcuts that mathematicians take. Um, I know in particular, I'm going to switch my, uh, my colors here if I can, pointer options, pin, okay, maybe not. One in particular that people take, have a tendency to take is they like to um, jump straight from here down to here. In fact, if you were in my classroom after doing this this way for several days, um, I would allow you to begin taking that shortcut, but I am very concerned that we understand the justification for what happens in between because there's really three things that happen in order to get us to that point. Um, just be aware that, that early on showing more details is very, very helpful to you in making sure you understand your thought process. The more uh, steps you skip, the more likely you are to make an error. Notice, by the way, equality, computation, identity, equality, computation, identity continues to appear and appear right there at the end this time. That's a long problem, isn't it? <laughs> Here's another one for you. Um, notice it's longer, but the basic premise of the problem is the same. You have some x's or unknown numbers. You have some more x's or unknown numbers, and you have some more x's or unknown numbers. If we were to strictly follow order of operations, the first thing we would have to do is we would have to take this negative 2x, whatever number it is, and add it to the 8. However, we can't do that because we don't know the value of negative 2x because we don't know what x stands for. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to use our commutative property to rearrange it. Notice that now all my x's are together, and notice that all my numbers are together commutative property. Once again, if I were to work this out using order of operations, I would have to add these first three numbers together and then add the 8. I'd be stuck at that point because I can't add the 8 until I know the value of these numbers. But the associative property says it really doesn't matter how we group this because it's all just combining things anyway. Associative property. Now that my like terms are grouped together, I can use the distributive property to combine my x's. I can use computation to combine my numbers. It's now in that familiar two-step equation form. Property of equality, computation, identity. Equality, computation, and identity. If you've been following along through our entire series of videos, one of the things that you might have noticed is that I'm going quicker and quicker through that equality, computation, identity. Um, at this point, that should be second nature to you. It should be almost automatic. It should not require a lot of thought. That's why I'm going through it as quickly as I am. You'll notice that will continue to pick up as we go through more and more complex problems. It is worth pointing out um, as well that if you needed to pause the video and go back and watch it another time, you certainly would be more than welcome to do that. Check this out. This one is starting to become just a little bit beastly. Um, it does have a lot of information in it, but nothing in there is something we have not already done. Now, a lot of students look at that and they get overwhelmed as to where to start. Um, the truth is there are a lot of different things that you can do that are all 
um, probably equally acceptable. But there are certain things you can do that are going to make the problem easier for yourself. For example, I have this rule of thumb that anytime I see a subtraction sign, subtraction sign, subtraction sign, I know from experience with my students that that is very likely to cause some problems. In fact, I will go ahead and tell you that most of the time if a student misses a problem, um, it has to do with keeping track of a subtraction sign or it's a simple computation error. It's very rarely having anything significant to do with conceptual lack of understanding of algebra. So the more careful you are with those minus signs and negative signs, the better off you are going to be. So here's my recommendation for how to start off a problem that looks like this. I almost never work a large problem with subtraction signs. Instead, I'm going to use the definition of subtraction that says that subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. Now, I don't really have time to go into the reasoning behind that here today, um, but just suffice it to say, if, if you're unsure of that, that is something that you can go back and, and research as well, and that is provable. Um, I will tell you that the students that take the time to do this change, to change all those minuses to plus negatives, plus negatives, plus negatives, are um, far more likely to get the problem correct. Uh, that's just um, my, my little piece of advice to you. Uh, notice, by the way, I also put these in parentheses. That's just to help me keep track of all those negative signs. There's a lot going on in this problem, and I don't want to lose track of things. The second thing I notice is that I have the opportunity to do the distributive property right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. You want to do this, the distributive property early on in the problem because once you've done that, you can see that you have lots of independent terms that are all added together. As long as that multiplied by two or negative three is in here, you got to be much more careful about keeping track of what's multiplied and what's added. Much easier to turn it all into one long string of addition. I should point out that now that it's a long string of addition, the commutative and associative properties apply. So I'm going to use the commutative property to put all my x's first and to put my numbers second. There's the x's. There's the numbers. Commutative property. I'm going to regroup those so that the x's are grouped together. The numbers are grouped together. And then I'm going to use my distributive property to combine the x's. Simple computation to combine the numbers. And now equality, computation, identity. Equality, computation, and identity. Notice that pattern coming up towards the end. If we can reach this point right here, they tend to be very, very much the same. Notice, I usually do this first, followed by this. That makes it very easy to do these, which allows me to combine like my like terms here. That, um, that sequence of events I found to be very, very helpful. Um, there are a few other little things I could throw it along with, but this really is a, is a pretty good synopsis of um, how you're going to want to solve those. Take your time, do your best, um, show the steps, watch your handwriting, give yourself lots of room. That's going to be more important for you than, than any single algebraic concept, I think. If you can do those things, the algebra tends to, to all fall in place. Very, very well done. Um, this is the end of, of this video. Um, we are going to create another video here momentarily um, where we talk about what to do when you have variables on both sides. Um, for now, thank you again for watching. If you uh, got something out of this, please feel free to like and subscribe. Maybe leave us a comment in the comment section. Um, turn on your notifications so that the next several lessons uh, that we do pop up for you. Um, our intention is to do the entire line of Algebra 1 if we can throughout the year. So hopefully you'll be able to follow along with us. Um, remember, don't let it get you down if, if, if you struggle at first. That's normal. That's common. Find somebody who can take a look at those with you and talk you through finding your own errors. Um, that's going to be very, very significant because you'll begin to find that you tend to make the same errors over and over again. And if you can correct one or two small things, you'll find that, um, that, the, the, that the process will, will eventually come together for you. Keep in mind, a river cuts through rock not because of its power, but because of its persistence. That's a quote from Jim Watkins. Thanks again. Best of luck to you guys. Um, take care.